This is my 10 liter heating and cooling Kululi mini fridge. I bought it on eBay for $22, as is for parts not working. And I'm gonna turn it into a long overdue hot box. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred backpack hanger in stainless steel and aluminum designed by me. Holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, holds your keys, super versatile. So I'm packing up some here that were recently sold. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. When I got the unit, I immediately opened the back and this is what I found. Check out the little black wire right here. Yup, it was disconnected. All I had to do was plug it in right here and the whole thing worked. Easiest fix ever. So what is a Peltier module? There are no moving parts in this heater and cooler. It is a thermoelectric cooling device. So one side of this chip gets cold and the other side gets hot as it tries to absorb heat on the one side and then it gives off that heat on the other side. Thus, this thing can heat and cool. You can power it with 110 volts, 12 volts, and you switch back and forth between AC and DC. You can cool and you can heat. Plug this in here, plug it into a socket, or you can plug in a vehicle adapter and plug this into your car. Not that I need this, but you never know if you gotta run it on 12 volts. Set that to AC, we can turn it to hot, and now it will heat. Or you can set it to cold, and it'll get cool. Why they use a green light instead of a blue light? I have no idea. Probably just cheap. Now that's it. There are no more controls. There's no controls. But I need to weigh I need a way to regulate constant temperature for this thing. So we need to add some heat control capabilities. To control the heat inside of this little heater cooler, we're gonna use a third party regulator. It's something that's used for like fish tanks and things like that. So we can just plug the cooler into this thing and this will turn it on and off. Plugged in. All right. So it shows the current ambient temperature in my shop at 62.7 degrees, which of course is part of the reason why I want to have a hot box because it's a little cold down here for curing things and they take a little bit extra time. What we wanna do is we wanna set this temperature to the temperature where this thing will turn off, okay? Right now it's on because it's trying to reach this existing temperature that I have set here, 85, but we don't want that. It's a little low, okay? So I don't wanna make this a tutorial about how this works or whatever, but I'm just gonna show you how we set this. Set, things start blinking. So we want the heater to get about 100 or 110 degrees, nothing crazy. We just want to be able to cure silicone or resin or whatever, or heat up the molds to a temperature. So we'll hit set. So the temperature difference, we want it to stay about 110. So we're going to leave it at that. If there's a calibration, I don't not a big deal and you set the centigrade or Fahrenheit and I like Fahrenheit just because it's a little bigger and it's a little easier for me 
the one thing I don't do in metric. And zero is without the timer. This thing you could set to have turned on and off at a certain period of time, but that's not important for what it is we're doing. We just want this thing to hit 110 degrees. So we'll plug in the Kululi and then we'll plug that, this into this, okay? Now, we'll turn this to hot because we want it to heat, okay? And we'll take our temperature probe and we'll put it inside here. We'll put it right here at about in the middle of this guy. All right, so now you can see the power has gone out and the unit is not running anymore. We're gonna open the door and we'll let some of the heat out and it'll cool off and we'll see this thing will kick back on as the temperature drops. There you go, one degree, it's turned off. And now it's trying to heat back up. Close this back up. Since I'm just starting to use this piece of equipment, I'm going to zip tie it together instead of screwing it right to the cooler because I want a little bit of flexibility to see how the unit works out. We'll use some Velcro and we'll Velcro the Inkbird controller to the top of the Kululi to affix it so we can plug everything in and keep everything nice and clean for right now. While I do all the cable management, I just wanna real quick talk about what the cost was here. So the cooler was 22 bucks. The controller I think was 29 or $30. So it's actually more than the cooler, but I bought that as is and I knew it was gonna be easy to fix. A lot of times you'll see people make hot boxes with just like a light bulb and that's nice and everything. I wanted something just a little bit fancier quite honestly than a cardboard box and a light bulb and something that if I needed to could cool should I ever need that for reducing the temperature of something whether it's uh, setting up epoxy or something like that. You never know. Just a good option and this is nice and clean. So I can easily pop a mold in there and heat that up to a specific temperature before I put resin inside of it. Or if I have really thick resin, I could heat that up as well and get it to thin out and flow a little bit better. It's gonna be great for heating up my clay for when I do clay ups and, you know, if I wanna cool a beer. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.